So, uh, just to continue on what uh, Mark was mentioning uh, about the anarchy, I'm going to go a bit deeper into, uh, let's say, how to put it, uh, the expectation that management has of us and how we can uh, help our management uh, understand when we're doing our agile transformation. So, uh, I would like to go on this picture, and I'm pretty sure that everybody is uh, quite familiar with that picture, the Agile Iceberg. We know about the 80-20%, uh, that uh, the 20% on tops are uh, uh, just the practices and tools that we're using in our everyday work, and uh, what is sitting under is uh, actually what is bringing more value to, to any Agile transformation. Uh, on the next slide, this is, uh, yes, don't judge on my drawing skills, what I wanted to, to show you here is uh, the Agile Iceberg of uh, Ignorance, and uh, it was created by Sidney Yoshida in 1989. And uh, it's about leadership and management understanding of the problems that we're having in, uh, in, uh, in our Agile transformation and Agile journ journeys. Uh, as you can see, the top of the iceberg, only 4% of uh, senior management understand the problem. Middle management only 9%, supervisors understand 75% of the problems. And uh, the frontline staff, which is us working with teams, it's 100% uh, of uh, understanding of the problem. So if we go back to the Agile iceberg, what do you think from your perspective management needs to sit to be able to understand uh, the problems? Is it on top or uh, at the bottom? Uh, so, to go on the next slide, which is uh, why management think Agile is better, I'm pretty sure that everyone is familiar with our friend Dilbert. Uh, so, maybe you can uh, read this one just for 30 seconds. Uh, or maybe I can read it. Look at this new Agile thing to do with unpredictable events and things we cannot control in our projects. We can prioritize, reduce the scope, change requirements at any time, and increase the chances of success of the project. Look, this is your new project with fixed deadline, fixed scope, fixed quality. You can be agile inside that uh, tri triangle. I think it's a uh, pretty standard situation in uh, a lot of uh, companies. Um, the difference between waterfall, let's say we're not going to talk about that much about waterfall. But uh, the difference in uh, waterfall, I think pr everyone is uh, pretty familiar with it. The requirements design, it's uh, uh, like a waterfall. That's the name of uh, waterfall, and it's step-by-step -step project. Requirements design, implementation, verification, and so on and so on. And uh, when I start working with management and when I uh, do, let's say, the introduction session with them and uh, uh, let's say, just trying to explain them why Agile is. This is most of the time what I have as an answer. I want to go Agile because uh, I'm going to deliver my features quickly. I want to go uh, with Agile because there is uh, some estimation, some velocity, some hours, story points, and all these kind of, uh, uh, let's say, things that we have in, in Agile about relative estimation and so on. Uh, my favorite one, Jira. I want to go to... Uh, to agile water to to agile approach because I'm going to have Jira and I'm going to see what the people are doing on day to day basis. Uh, so when we're speaking with management from um, uh, let's say from management and above to leadership and executives, it's really important to uh, first of all to listen to them to understand their problem and considering that. Uh, I guess there is a lot of people in the audience which are Scrum Masters, Agile coaches, uh, change ag agents, and so on. I think it's really important to give them that uh, guidance and explain them a bit more what is Agile and what is going to be uh, their benefit. So when we're talking about Agile introduction with them, again, going back to Dilbert, uh, starting next week, our meetings will be stand-ups with no chairs, so we'll be more focused. So you examine all of the problems in the company and decided that the root cause was chairs, obviously. We are also losing the dress code. Uh, so our problems are chair and pants. This is, uh, um, uh, let's say, a good metaphor to, um, to explain when we're speaking with, uh, with our leadership and management that is not uh, uh, the simple things that are uh, making sense and think from the perspective again from uh, uh, from the Agile iceberg and the iceberg of uh, 
ignorance is the problems that we're trying to, to solve with choosing specific uh, methodology or specific process, doesn't matter if it's agile or not. It's about uh, helping the teams to, to work together. Um, when we're doing agile introduction, and this is uh, like, um, uh, I want to say tool set for you guys to, to use. Uh, when we're doing Agile uh, introduction, we can have inception, kickoff session, vision workshops. Uh, there is one activity which I really like, uh, and I'm going to go back to it. Uh, we go to the moon, Agile assessment teams and leadership sessions. Um, if we need to deep dive into those topics, um, I don't know if uh, uh, any of you have done inception on what is expected in the ex uh, inception, but the idea is to gather Everyone, and I mean when we're doing an Agile transformation, an Agile uh, journey, the idea is to gather everyone within the same room for, I don't know, for half an hour, for one hour, for half a day, sorry, not half an hour, for half a day, day depending on uh, the company, and uh, to bring everyone together so we can uh, hear why we're starting this transformation. This is an answer that could be given only by leadership and management alike. Because uh, just doing something for the sake of doing is not a uh, good practice. So during those um, inceptions, and I've done a few of them, we gather everyone, sponsors, stakeholders, shareholders, teams, uh, uh, QA manager, everyone, absolutely every, every person that is going to take care of, uh, or not taking care, but uh, every person that is going to be part of that uh, journey, transformation, pilot project, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, the idea behind it is just to go over and answer first the question, why we're we building or why we're we starting this uh, transformation. Uh, as a follow-up on the kickoff session, this is a bit more, um, let's say, a bit more deep dive into why we're building specific application or specific uh, product. So in the kickoff session, it's... Uh, um, advisable, and it's not only advisable, but it's it's needed that the people to attend are going to be the people who are actually doing the the stuff. So in the inception phase, is everyone, the sponsors, shareholders, stakeholders. In the kickoff session, is more uh, the actual team that is going to be delivering, uh, let's say, the product. Uh, vision workshop again. It's it's based on uh, the team, and it's more concentrated on how we envisioning that uh, achievement that we want to do, and uh, do we have any quality gates to just to see if we're going to be able to deliver or we're not going to be able to deliver, and how we're going to measure ourselves that we're delivering. Um, what I'm doing with uh, the teams that I've been working is uh, we go to the moon exercise, which is. Uh, um, about 50 something years ago, JFK uh, made a speech in one of the universities in US, I forgot which one was it, uh, about US going to the moon. Uh, so it's uh, in agile perspective, in, in, let's say in agile perspective, what, uh, what I've been doing with the teams and what I can propose to you is just uh, uh, put on one side the moon, on the other side uh, Mother Earth, and then put a, a big uh, uh, rocket ship. The idea is to put everything which is helping us to get to get start to, to start that colony on uh, on the moon and all the things that which are uh, stopping us to to get there. Um, the main idea behind it and the main uh, feedback out of this exercise is you're gonna have all the things which are helping us to get there and everyone is will be aware of those things and the people responsible for for those things and all the technical issues or personal issues that are stopping us to to get there. It's quite uh, engaging and quite uh, interesting exercise. And it's uh, one of the projects that I've done it. We had a big wall of 27 meters to, to get to the moon. So it was uh, quite interesting uh, activity. The other thing uh, when we're talking about Agile introduction is uh, Agile assessments. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people have done them. It's, um, they're more about uh, maturity level of uh, teams. Considering that we are just starting with uh, our transformation, it would be a good idea because we have different people with different level of understanding. It would be good to, to see how we are matching and what we are expecting in the future with regards to our maturity. And the last one, teams and leadership session, I think that's pretty clear. It's, uh, 
we as the coaches, changing the agents or scrum masters, we need to hold those sessions with uh, teams and leadership to increase knowledge on a uh, continuous uh, basis. Uh, so challenges and expectation when we're doing our uh, uh, transformation, challenges, a lot of uh, uh, my colleagues already mentioned that mindset shifting is not just uh, I get the agile mindset and that's it, we're doing everything. It's about mindset shifting, uh, uh, behaving in a way that we're helping our customers to receive their feature products, applications uh, quicker, how to experiment, uh, becoming a learning organization, helping each other, uh, psychology safety, as Morgan mentioned. So it's, it's not just uh, agile mindset and that's it. Um, the other challenge that I've been having a lot with uh, the teams that I've been working on is raw expectations. When we're, doing, when we're going into um, agile and specific process, the first question, the first question that I'm getting from uh, the teams is, uh, what is going to happen with my role? What about the self-organization? I read this, I read that. So it's um, something that we need to keep in mind that uh, when we are doing this uh, transformation journey, it's really important to be able to answer to those kind of questions. Face-to-face uh, -face as much as possible. Uh, well, for me, this is a huge issue because uh, uh, when I'm working with the teams, the, uh, let's say the programmers or developers or the team members all the time with their headphones, so it's quite difficult to uh, explain them the benefit of face-to-face -face talking. So I'm trying different techniques to in, engage them a bit, let's say. But definitely still a problem, even though uh, this morning Jürgen mentioned about uh, remote teams and it's 21st century. Yes, I completely agree, but sometimes it's a uh, huge pain. Uh, process introduction and changes. This is going back to the uh, sessions that we need to help with management or with uh, uh, our teams to explain them why we're doing certain change to have their buy-in. Otherwise, just changing a process from uh, today to tomorrow, it's, it's just, uh, it will create more uh, <laughs> anarchy, let's say. Uh, what's happening with my team, team lead road? Yes, I've heard that uh, also many times. It's, it's similar to our expectation. Uh, we need to keep in mind that it, it will have these kind of questions and we need to be able to answer within the company boundaries. So when we're starting our uh, transformation, we need to be aware, and uh, this should be shared by leadership and management on the uh, inception uh, workshop, what is going to happen with uh, the roles keeping in mind the company boundaries. We cannot say, you know what, you've been team lead for now and tomorrow you're not going to be team lead because of whatever reasons. So we need to be able to, to explain that. And the big challenge, why? Why are we starting the Agile transformation? Why we want to do this? Why we want to become whatever we want to become? This needs to be answered by leadership and management constantly and, and on a non-stop basis. Uh, unfortunately, the expectations that uh, our management is having uh, with that transformation, I already mentioned them, tickets, Jira, meetings, too boring. Uh, why are we doing this? I don't want to do the transformation. Everything was working fine, blah, blah, all these kind of things, which is, uh, which is there. And, and I think it's, it's more about uh, educating and coaching uh, management leadership and teams alike to, to limit those things to, to as little as possible. Uh, changes. What is going to happen when we do uh, our Agile transformation? Well, first, I think it's, again, important to, to going back to the point of why we're doing this. Uh, vision. Do we expect somebody to provide a vision? Yes, by all means. We expect that from our management and leadership to have that vision and, and to explain it to us in a way in which we can have our uh, buy-in. What we expected, again, down to the team level, starting from uh, leadership. Who are our sponsors? Because in, in every journey that we're having, there is a lot of uh, questions how we are um, not only financing, financial, financially helping this, but more from the perspective of uh, 
uh, who is the sponsor and who is pushing for that change. So we need to be aware and to understand and ask questions to management about uh, sponsors. Who is driving that initiative? What is going to be you know, what? What are going to be the benefits and so on? Uh, the last two that I put and I put them uh, with question marks. Actually, I put everything with question marks. Uh, Agile committee and Agile roadmap. When we're doing uh, uh, agile transformations, and this is what I'm uh, proposing to a lot of uh, the teams and uh, leadership that I'm working with, is to have an uh, agile committee which is consisting of, depending on the company size, with a uh, certain amount of, uh, or not amount, but uh, certain people who can uh, judge and see if that agile journey is uh, successful or if it's progressing at the same uh, pace. Because um, when we're doing uh, the transformation, somebody needs to measure if we're doing good or if we're doing bad or if we need to improve or if we do not need to do, do things or whatever. It's really important for that uh, Agile committee to be there and to be able to answer those questions. Uh, Agile roadmap, it's something that, uh, yes, it could be done. The main idea behind the Agile Roadmap is not just to uh, map what we're expecting from the teams as managers, but it's more of uh, what is going to happen in, in, let's say, the near future. Three months, six months, nine months, whatever the, the length of the journey, it, we need to have that uh, Agile Roadmap. And uh, when we're talking about uh, changes from day two, what is going to happen? Probably it will be outcome versus output. We as a leaders, management executives, need to be able to explain that to all the teams that we're working. Uh, commitment, I like that word, and uh, similar to Mark, I want to check on what commitment means, because uh, there is a lot of, uh, let's say, abuse in that word. Uh, commitment is a promise. So we as a team promise to management that we're going to do our best to achieve uh, the results that are expecting to us, but we are not committing our life on, on that delivery. Uh, Self-organization, we talk about self-organization. Again, here it's a bit more, um, uh, let's say, a uh, thorough explanation about uh, self-organization. And uh, what, I what I understand from self-organization is not only allowing the teams to, to do their work whatever way they decide it's uh, suitable. It's more of uh, giving them that uh, environment in which they can be self-organized, which is uh, giving them the right tools, giving them the right uh, technical architecture, giving them the right uh, the rights to decide how they're going to do the work, giving them the opportunity to uh, provide feedback, giving us the opportunity to have a voice, Heard and so on and so on. Uh, also, another uh, changes is day to day, which is uh, considering that we've been working in certain way as of today. Tomorrow, something is happening, so we need to drive that. Uh, um, let's say process or change or uh, transformation or journey, and. Uh, also, what I notice in a lot of uh, organizations that I've been to, how I will benefit. It's really important for the management to explain to the team members how they will benefit and vice versa. The, the guys to explain uh, to our leadership how they will benefit in using uh, uh, certain process. Uh, expectation, again, uh, Dubert guy, I think they're going to share with the presentation with everyone so you can read it, but there is uh, really a lot of uh, comics about this one. Uh, this is the main expectation which I've heard going the, uh, in a new project or in a new company to work with leadership. We're expecting from you, and from you I mean the team. Uh, Quick, we have everything done in an agile way, which is connected with uh, the speed. Uh, we want quality, we want back free ups, we want ownership, focus, velocity, burn down charts, and so on and so on. Um, I find that really odd because there is a lot of information uh, online, there is a lot of uh, scrum cleanings, there is a lot of, uh, um, let's say, um, feedback about how leadership needs to approach this kind of, uh, let's say, transformations. 
And uh, when I when I hear, let's say, I want the team to have focus and responsibilities, my first question is, uh, do we provide the environment in which the team can uh, can be effective? Did we provide it, uh, the environment when uh, the team can have ownership? Or we're just dictating on things which we expect to be there, which are not there? Because if, uh, just simple example, if we need uh, um, some technical improvements done, uh, in one of the companies that I used to work for something which cost us, uh, I think, two minutes to be fixed, it was about three months of ping pong uh, emails and talks and slacks and whatever just to get that uh, uh, done. So to, to, to for the companies and for the leadership to ask for focus and ownership and accountability and all these kind of things, we need to be in the environment where the team can say yes, we can provide this or no, we can we cannot provide this for uh, for obvious reasons. So the mindset shifting from, uh, I think, pretty it's pretty common from command and control to agile mindset. So uh, the, real, the real gains for leadership to allowing us to be in that, uh, um, let's say, agile mindset, it, it will allow them uh, self-organization, trust, experimentation, learn by doing learning organization. Leaders will go first, obviously, innovation and human development and uh, uh, participation. Um, when we talk about, uh, let's say, trust, also, uh, I've heard that before multiple times that, uh, um, let's say, the teams are not uh, not being trusted by management. And when I when I speak with the teams mainly. Uh, what they're saying is uh, nobody's providing us a, a, let's say, feedback platform to, to share our feedback so we can create that uh, trusting environment. So from, um, from leadership perspective to, to, uh, to allow that trust, all the time I've got the, uh, the question, uh, Lubo, how I'm gonna, how I will trust them if they're not uh, delivering, or if they're not delivering, uh, uh, or delivering uh, bad code, or uh, full with bugs, and so on and so on. So it's a mutual connection. Uh, we need to meet uh, somewhere in the middle with uh, management and leadership and talk uh, and establish what does it mean trust for us. All of this, if you think about it, it's done uh, back at, uh, uh, in the inception workshops. In uh, those workshops, all of those uh, things are discussed in great detail, and uh, we can create uh, the working agreement there, we can discuss how we are interacting with each other, we can discuss a lot of things during that uh, workshop, and that's why it's not, uh, um, it's not, let's say, advisable, or it's not good, depending obviously on the company size, to just to try to ram up everything for two hours and say, okay, let's start developing, but it's more to spend as much time as you needed to uh, to go and uh, understand that uh, to the fullest. Experimentation, learn by doing, I think this is uh, uh, happening now, at least to a certain level in the companies that have been working on and generally on the market. Uh, we are allowing some time for uh, 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 code refactoring, for uh, innovation, for something new to try. Uh, learn by doing, obviously, based on um, on uh, even if you go to the Scrum processes itself, it's empirical process, so it's based on experience. So we try something, and then we iterate to to learn more and more. Uh, leaders go first. This is a bit uh, difficult for me. For example, because when I speak with leaders and uh, when I ask them to be the, let's say, the front runner of that transformation, most of the time it's for them, let's see how the teams will react and then I'm going to jump in if there is a problem, which is, uh, I think, I've, at least I found it a bit more uh, problematic as of uh, now. Human development and participation, it's more from uh, uh, the kind of organization and the culture that we want to establish. Do we want to develop our people really, not just sending them to some uh, uh, courses, for example? 
but really human development so we, we can uh, have those people as uh, part of, let's say, our company DNA or similar. Um, adopting. Uh, when we're adopting common agreements and understanding, uh, as I mentioned, Agile road, uh, Roadmap Creation, it's, um, it's quite important, or at least I see it, it's uh, quite important from the perspective that it's going to give us some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, foundation on what to follow up and to have uh, uh, something factual so we can see if we're doing good or if we're uh, uh, not doing, let's say, that good, then we can inspect and adapt on those things. Uh, quantitative and uh, qualitative metrics in introduction. Um, when we're working with, uh, with leadership all the time, the, they're asking me, um, I want to have some data I want to be able to make decisions. I want uh, the number of commits. Uh, I want to see how story points per person, how many story points a person done. I want to see hours. I want to see capacity planning. All those things uh, I'm not recommending them to do, but it's uh, uh, when we're starting that agile transformation journey with uh, our leadership, we need to be uh, aware that our management and our leadership might ask us for some uh, metrics so we can explain that to, to them. Shared commitment, I think it's uh, pretty straightforward. When we are starting that journey, it's a um, good idea to, to share the expectation on both sides. Uh, uh, team expectation and leadership expectation so we can uh, uh, align them together, which is going to allow us to, to move forward in a let's say, a bit more uh, straightforward way rather than uh, all the problems that we do not, if we do not have a uh, shared commitment. Um, inspect and adapt based on our organizational boundaries. Again, it's uh, what all the other guys mentioned. Um, considering that we are doing, uh, let's say, something which has never been done in the company, it's good to have that uh, mindset of inspecting and adapting and uh, moving in or taking decision when something needs to be taken rather than just uh, uh, waiting on things to happen. Uh, create an effective environment. This is again a very common question at least to ask to me about um, uh, how we can be a bit more effective and I want my efficiency to go up, I don't know, 100%. Uh, to have that effective environment we need to uh, uh, go back to again to management and, and team and to to understand what does it mean to be effective from leadership perspective and what does it mean to be effective from uh, uh, team perspective. Value small wins and celebrate them and learn. I think that's uh, pretty obvious. Whatever we deliver, even though small feature, big feature, whatever it is, uh, we need to to create that bond between the organization and us. It's uh, uh, value that whatever we delivered as a team and uh, celebrate them. Identify the early adopters. It's uh, obviously when we're doing this kind of transformation, we need uh, support. We cannot do it alone. So uh, during all those workshops, we as uh, let's say uh, change agents, we have that opportunity to find. And uh, quite common, the people came to me directly and said, "I want to be part of uh, of the early adopters." And uh, value and seek feedback again. If we're uh, on that journey, it's obvious that uh, we need to have that uh, feedback and um, be receptive on the feedback and also be able to, to give feedback uh, too. Uh, this is uh, out of our friend Google, leadership styles and agile. This is uh, uh, Daniel Goleman, I think he created that few, I'll, actually 20 years ago, maybe even more. Uh, it's uh, the leadership styles and uh, how we can map the leadership styles to, to our agile transformation journey. Well, it's, uh, you can see the, the, the six uh, leadership styles, visionary coaching, affiliative, democratic, uh, pace setting and commanding. Uh, most of the time, when we are doing uh, our agile transformation, we go from a uh, uh, commanding type of uh, leader and management, and we go to the idea is to go to coaching or uh, um, 
visionary, which is uh, again down to the point of which we need to, um, when we start our digital uh, agile transformation, uh, we need to understand in which, uh, uh, what kind of uh, leadership we have as, as, uh, as uh, sponsors, let's say, or stakeholders or shareholders, so we we'll know in what kind of uh, um, way we need to work within with uh, the organization, so we can uh, um, we can move in the right direction. I, would, I should say. Or the, the idea here is uh, get to know your sponsor and get to know what kind of leaders there, so they can uh, help you in, uh, let's say, in establishing and pushing for that uh, uh, for that approach. And I think, yes, uh, I think this was my last slide, so it was yes, pretty quickly. And now, if you have any questions, shoot. We have questions on mente.com. If you turn us up ah, the side, you'll okay. see. Desktop management has to understand the problem more than 4%. Isn't their job to set direction and goals? Yes, it's their job. But uh, uh, is it happening? No. Or at least uh, I have not seen it 100% uh, happening. They need to understand uh, the problem 100% because, yes, whoever wrote that, they need to set direction and goals. What they're setting most of the time is just, uh, I want to get there by which date, and that's it. Or at least this, uh, this is what I've, I've, I've seen before. So, yes, they need to, to give us vision, direction, and uh, goals, at least short term. So when we're doing these kind of things, it's, it's, uh, it's really important to, to establish some, uh, uh, I don't want to say deadline, but uh, establish some uh, time boxes. For example, for these uh, three months, I need to deliver this and this uh, minimum valuable product, or I need to get that uh, market research done, or whatever it is. But it's yes, there you go. OK, I'm an agile coach. I know the strategy, toxic theory, and even challenge is better now, thanks. but. What are the next practical steps? Workshop, because of workshop we will not work. Uh, well, it's not just about doing a workshop. It's um, it's um, it's, it's um, gathering the management and teams together to to align on everything. And the workshop is one uh, one possibility to make that happen. Another one could be uh, coaching one-on-one -on -one if they don't want to listen. Another one could be uh, a gathering in, gather them in a room or outside of work and just discuss what they really want to, to achieve. But yes, workshops as a workshop, just uh, going through uh, the basics is sometimes is not helpful. And sometimes we need to be a bit more uh, pushy in... in uh, Helping them to understand that uh, the, expecta the expectations that uh, the organization, the process, and uh, the journeys have from them, rather than just uh, because, as you mentioned here, whoever wrote that question, it is possible. And I had also that uh, uh, situation when they didn't even want to attend uh, workshops. So in this case, we need to to push. I have identified early adopter teams. How to spread Agile virus further? Motivation, interest. <laughs> well, uh, how to spread the Agile further? Well, a lot of ways. Um, I don't know, the, uh, let's say, the context or the company behind uh, uh, what is the environment that you've been working on. But, uh, for example, in uh, some organization um, that I've been working on, I had a lot of uh, games in which they, they, the interest grow further and further. So they, they start asking even for, uh, for more, more things to do together to, to learn about uh, Agile. So one thing could be games. Uh, another thing could be learning lunches. 
uh, breakfast clubs or something like that in learning lunches, for example, what you can do is just uh, pick a topic which is interested uh, from the agile perspective, from your perspective for the early adopters and just uh, uh, dig a, a bit deeper into it, I should say. It's just practice and, uh, and learn on the go because there is no silver bullet for, for anything, unfortunately. Um, Okay, feedback is crucial for good change management. How do you gather feedback when implementing Agile and show you have listed and show you have listened to your stakeholders? Okay, uh, I guess it's two questions. Feedback is crucial. Okay, how do you gather feedback? Well, when we have uh, um, those sessions, inception workshops, kickoff sessions, visions, and so on, what you can do is uh, uh, give a feedback form with very simple questions. Uh, did you understand everything? How did you feel about it? So on, blah, 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 all these kind of things. So it's, uh, uh, one thing could be uh, surveys. Another thing could be just uh, simple talk to get their understanding and see if they, if they understood what was uh, the purpose of it. And uh, how to show that you listen to your stakeholders well, the simple answer should be, did we deliver? Yes, so you can see, the, uh, you can see that as a feedback from your stakeholder. But uh, how did we listen to their feedback? It's, uh, well, involve them as much as possible. And uh, involve them in, in uh, when we're starting with uh, a kickoff session or vision or something like that, it's, it's, it's uh, their platform to, to, to have a feedback. And for us, obviously, to, to share that uh, feedback with them. So invite them as much as possible to, to everything. And if they don't want to, to attend, it's a bit difficult to, to give them uh, feedback. Okay, does it make sense adopting the other way of working step by step and not just dramatically changing everything at once? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I think, or based on experience, and I'm going to share uh, why. Uh, the last company that I've been working on now, they done uh, dramatically change everything at once. It's a company with about 70, 80 people, and they just said, you know what? Forget everything that we were doing. Let's do brand new from today. And it was actually on Friday they said, we need to do it, and on Monday, new process. Uh, did it work? No. Uh, why? Probably because uh, to change in an any, any uh, process, methodology, or whatever it is, it, it takes time. Uh, I never seen it working. I don't know if, if somebody had that experience when uh, something was changed dramatically and they said, you know what, from now we're gonna do all these kind of things like in the Dilbert comic book. But uh, um, I never seen it uh, working uh, as of, uh, we're doing waterfall today, from tomorrow we're starting with uh, agile things. So my proposal and what I've seen in practice is uh, definitely go step by step. Maybe not uh, uh, only one step, maybe two or three steps, but just gradually increase knowledge because otherwise it's becoming really, um, really difficult to, to get the bind from teams and leadership at the same time. Because otherwise somebody is not going to be happy, either uh, the leadership or, or the teams.